The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome to today's webinar with your host, James McDonald. Well, thank you very much, Andrea, and I'd like to start by welcoming our coaching members to coaching session number three. As you can see, we've got a fantastic topic today. Our topic today is direct response lead generation, and we're going to get into the fundamentals of how we're using simple, inexpensive direct response lead generation to target the audience we're looking for simply by presenting valuable information that prospects desire in a way that makes it compelling and non-threatening for them to get it. This is going to be a really great webinar for you at this time. Um, and to understand how lead generate how the lead generation system works so well. Now, a couple things before we get started. I want to ask that before we do get started, you understand that Craig is going to be referencing material on the website. So everything that we're looking at here today, all of you are privy to this information. Craig is going to navigate around the coaching members only website and you're going to be able to see, because you're logged on here, all of the information. However, you know that you can always go back later on today or at any time and you can re-listen to today's webinar. And we maybe recommend that you do that more often than you would. Uh, and I say that because there's no way that you're going to be able to absorb everything that Craig talks about today. Now, we're also going to do a Q&A session a little later on on the webinar. And throughout today's webinar, we're very excited that we've invited some very special guests, some superstar students and coaches to participate on the webinar here to offer their input, their experience, uh, and most importantly, their suggestions to all of you as well. So Craig's really gone out of his way to make sure that this is going to be an awesome use of the next 90 minutes to two hours here. Um, I want to thank all of you for joining us. And Craig, welcome and take it away. All right, thank you very much, James. Uh, what I want to do today is I want to take you through exactly what I did to generate leads. So we're going to look at my actual ads. Okay, the ads that I ran, you're going to understand how much those ads cost me and exactly what responses I got. You see, I want to demonstrate to you how you can create an ad rotation. Once you understand what I did, you'll understand that this truly is automatic marketing. Once you figure out what works best for you in your marketplace, then you can create a schedule and basically repeat the same activities over and over and over again to get the same the same great results. So um, that's going to bring a lot of certainty to your business. Imagine knowing with certainty that you're going to generate X amount of leads every day, every week, every month, and every year. So if you just model after what I'm going to show you here today, it is possible for you to have a business that looks exactly like mine. What you're going to notice is the results that I got, the, res the response that I got to any of these campaigns is, is not stellar. They're not outstanding. Uh, my results are very typical. Okay, It's very doable for each and every one of you to get the same kind of response that I got, if not much better. You know, Typically, when I'm running an ad campaign on any given day, I'm generating, as you'll see, you know, one, two, maybe three leads. And I think there's a, a perception amongst some of you that when I run these ads, um, I did far better than you, uh, that, that somehow I generated dozens of leads. And, you know, in, in most cases, that's not true. So I think this is going to be very revealing as I give you a backstage pass to my business and I show you the exact ads I ran the response that I got, and also demonstrate to you how organized I was. You're going to find that the better you know your numbers, the better your business is going to be. Or let me say it this way. I found over the years that the best realtors know their numbers. Okay, the best realtors in our system, the, the realtors that are most the most profitable with my system, really know their numbers. Now, as James mentioned, I've invited some of our coaches onto the call, onto the webinar here today to add some commentary. So I'm going to introduce uh, 
uh, these three coaches now, and, and then we're going to uh, take a look at some valuable resources that are right on the coaching website um, under Session 3. Now, I, I don't want you to go to the coaching website because I want you to pay attention to me. I want you to watch the webinar. And I'm going to be taking you to the coaching website. You're, you're going to know exactly where to find these resources uh, when we're finished the webinar here today, and they'll be, they'll be there forever for you to, to be able to access. So let's go over to our panel now. Uh, first of all, uh, from, from Phoenix, we've got Lester Cox. Uh, Lester, good morning. Good morning, Greg. Hey, thanks for being with us uh, here today. Uh, today, Lester, as I mentioned, we're going to have a look at the actual results, the ads that I ran, how much they cost. Uh, make sure everybody understands how simple what I did really, really is. And if they would just simply copy like you did, they'll get the same great results. It, it really is. And, and really, the, the people that we're working with, that, coach, that we're coaching right now, I've found that those that are actually doing what we're asking them to do, which is exactly what you're going to cover today, uh, are just knocking it out of the park. I had talked to one guy yesterday. He's got 67 leads from just running one of your ads uh, the last two weeks. Uh, it's unbelievable. I mean, he's getting great lead response. He's, he's overwhelmed by it, as a matter of fact. So uh, <clears throat> if, they, if everybody will just drink this Kool-Aid, I guarantee it works. It's worked in every market I have ever worked with anybody in without, without fail. You know, I, I like what I've heard you say so many times before, which is if the, since you've been a coach with our organization, you've never had anybody that actually followed your instructions fail with this system. Absolutely none. Zero. In fact, in fact, had, everybody, many, many, in fact everybody who has, I'm sorry. You've had people fail that don't run the ads or they don't know the universal callback script. Correct. But, but anybody who's actually done a, precisely what we ask them to do without fail, they have exploded their business. I mean, not everybody has tripled and, and quadrupled and, and 10 times their business, but everybody has made a substantial increase in their income. Coaching is absolutely free of charge. There is no cost to this. The only cost is not doing what we're asking you to do. Right. All right, so Lester, we're going to come back to you in a minute. Now, remember, everyone, Lester is in Phoenix, Arizona. Okay, he's in the southwest. Okay, now we're going to go over to the northeast. We're going to go to Philadelphia and talk to Warren Flax. Uh, Coach Warren, how are you doing this morning? Excellent, Craig. Good morning. You know, what I want to demonstrate today, Warren, is, is how uh, organized my business really was. Uh, that I, it was basically rinse and repeat. I just did the same things over and over and over again. Once I had uh, proven to myself uh, what campaigns worked the best, which mediums worked the best, I was able to just duplicate this over and over and over and over again. I really um, figured out how to place my, my marketing on autopilot, and I know you've done the same thing. Yeah, and I think one of the, the hardest things sometimes for those of us that are, you know, entrepreneurial, we're hard-charging people, we, we think of ourselves as very successful people, and we want to adapt your system, but of course, my big ego gets in the way, and so I don't want to just do exactly what Craig did, is what I was thinking in the beginning, because I'm thinking, that would be too easy, so I'm going to put my own spin on it, I'm going to put my own twist on it, maybe I think that my market is different. And what I found, you know, I've been following your system now for eight years, is the more I go back to doing exactly what you do, get my ego out of the way, and just humble myself and do what you did, the better the results are that we get. The more that I try to tweak it and think that I know more than, than the system, that's when I seem to get into trouble. So if, if I can encourage everybody out there to do one thing, you know, Lester likes to say drink the Kool-Aid. What he means by that is just simply – just follow exactly what Craig is saying. Work with your coach on making sure that what you think is exactly what Craig's doing is exactly what we're teaching, and, and you will really get the results. And if I do a good job here today, I'll, uh, I'll make it really clear what it is that everyone should be doing. All right, Warren, uh, we'll come back to you throughout the call. Uh, let's uh, go to our, our final uh, panelist, uh, Coach Rick Brash. Rick is in Canada. He's in Western Canada, so we've We've really tried to uh, spread our coaches out uh, today geographically. We've got Lester in the southwest. We've got Warren in the in the northeast. And we've got Rick Brash up in Canada. Rick, good morning. Hi, Craig. Great to be here. Hi, guys. 
Rick, uh, you became a real student of direct response advertising, and I know you organized your business exactly the way I'm going to describe on this morning's webinar. Maybe you can just uh, give everyone some uh, some comments on how important that was to you. Well, I remember, Craig, the best part of hooking up with you all those years ago, maybe 10 years ago, was you laid everything out on a table for me, and you said, you can do all of this if you need to, but whatever you do, simply do it the way I've done it. And I, I remember taking your stuff and bringing it home, Craig, and thinking, well, I'm going to have to adjust this a little bit for my market. It may work where those guys are, but I'm in a different place. I'm in Canada. I'm in Western Canada. You know what? Big mistake. Big mistake. Lester has said the same thing this morning. Warren is saying the same thing this morning, and I'm going to repeat it for the third time. Simply do what Craig is telling you to do. And I went along for about four months, Craig, and I took your stuff, and I, I massaged it more than I should have. Like Warren says, my ego got in the way. I rebooted three months into this, and even though I was making some money, I simply took your ads, took your face out, took your office out, put my face in and my office in, Craig, and the leads came to me thick and heavy. And everybody needs to get that. You simply need to do what was proven long before you joined our program, and success will follow. And here's the interesting thing, Craig. We've told people to do that beyond the realms of MLS real estate in North America. We have members in nine other countries around the world who simply take your methods and apply them to their business. And the reason? It works. It works, and it works, and it works. So everybody listening today, the best advice we're going to give you is copy. Just copy and do what we've done already. Hey, hey Rick. That, that, that reminds me of a funny story. Early on when I first started this, I forgot to take Craig's face out on one of my hands, and it still got leaks. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Okay, well, uh, hopefully everyone can see my screen. I'm on the uh, coaching website. Uh, can everyone see that? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay, now I want to take you to our resources for today. So we go to resources, and today we're on session three, which is direct response lead generation. I don't know how many of you take the time to read all of my notes here, but there's some really good information here. Okay, why image advertising doesn't work, why you must listen to your prospects, the importance of tuning into WIFM, what's in for me. Purchasing is a process, not an event. But I'd like you to spend some time actually reading the resources here on the coaching, on the coaching website. Now, what we're going to focus on today are the attachments here in the bottom left-hand corner. First of all, let's have a look at the classified ads that you should be running. These are the exact classified ads I want you to run. Okay, I can't say it any simpler than that. Make your classified ads look like this. These are the, the classified ads that I ran for years and years and years and years with massive success. Okay, now, again, I want you to pay attention to the webinar. These classified ads are there for you on the coaching website under session number three. But this is exactly what you should be running. Okay, there's plenty of them to target every type of buyer and seller that you're interested in, in going after. And here are the display ads. Okay, so you have all of the ads. You have exactly what I'm going to refer to today. You should run them exactly the way they're laid out. You should not change them. You should definitely test and pay attention to the tracking results to determine which of these ads get you the best response because some of them will work better than others. Okay, now I want to take you to the USP hotline scripts. All of the scripts 
for your USPs are recorded here. Okay, so when you're using a hotline to promote your properties, remember at the super conference I said your main greeting should promote your biggest unique selling propositions. If on your main greeting you go immediately to the details of a specific property, all you're going to get is a bunch of hang-ups. Because as we've discussed, promoting a single property has very narrow appeal. So your main greeting might sound like this. Hi, this is, uh, you know, Craig Proctor with, with Remax. And if you'd like information on what homes in the neighborhood have recently been selling for, please press 1. If you would like to receive regular updates of homes that match your home buying criteria, please press 2. If you'd like a list of distressed sales, please press 3. If you'd like information on our guaranteed sale program or our Sunday tour of homes, all of the scripting is here for you. So you don't have to have a creative bone in your body. All you have to do is open up the Word document, and then you're going to record these scripts in your own voice. Really, really simple. So you're going to decide which of these USPs you want to offer on your main greeting. Now, some of you don't even have the hotlines. And if you have the hotlines, you only have one of them. You should have both of them. Because we do branded and we do less branded advertising. Okay, now I want to go down to the actual results that I got. And I want to show you exactly the ads that I ran and how well this worked and how well it will work for you. Any comments from the coaches so far? Yeah, that's all right out there, Craig. For those of you who are wondering about um, recording your USB scripts, um, your computer probably came with a little bit of software that lets you sit in the office and do it two or three or four times until you think it's right. So for those of you who are even concerned about spending a little bit of money talking on the telephone, you don't have to do that. You can record it locally, and you can simply upload it to your hotline through the back-end control panel that AMS has given you. So that doesn't cost a penny. And by the way, I think Lester's smiling, the, one of the best leads we can generate, one of the absolute best, easiest to convert leads we can generate comes from our listings. You get a hotline lead, boy, that's a great one to be all over right away. Lester, do you agree? If you have one listing, if you only have one listing and you have signs on it, you need a property tree hotline and you drive traffic to your 24-hour recorded information line. Uh, we got some special tricks we'll show you where you'll actually be talking to that client while they're sitting in front of the house. Most yes. of you have listings, and you need to leverage off of that. If you have listings, that means you have for sale signs. If you have for sale signs, you want to make sure that you're maximizing the number of inquiries from every one of your listings. Okay, and you want to automate this as much as possible by using a hotline. Craig, in a, in the a hotline typical, must say the right things. In our in our typical market here with my listings, uh, you know, it, and it, it adjusts a little bit per season, but uh, typically I can count on four to five of the best leads I can possibly get from each sign each month. So if you've got uh, five signs out there, you could get 20 to 25 of your very best high-quality leads every month just from having the right signage on your properties. And the reason why these prospects are the very best prospects is because they're actually shopping for a home. If you read my materials for this call, I talk about the fact that that buying or selling real estate uh, is a process, not an event. And somebody that's out there driving the streets, driving through neighborhoods, and they're calling off of for sale signs, I think we can all agree that that's a buyer that's a prospect that's further along in the purchase process because they're out there actually shopping for a home. So you can, if you use the right scripting on your hotline, you can compel these prospects to raise their hand and contact you. Now you've got an extremely hot lead. Okay, now in front of you, 
I'm going to show you the results for the classified ads that I just showed you. Now, I tested all of those classified ads, and I determined which ones work the best for me. Now, I want everyone to hear me on this. I ran five classified ads every week, not 50, five. You can see the first-time buyer ad had ID 1370. I ran it on Sunday, January the 2nd. I got two hits and one lead. It ran again on January the 4th. I got three hits and two leads. January 6th, two hits. I got zero leads that day. Look at the cost. Very low cost. First time fixer uppers, ID thirteen sixty. Three hits, three leads. Okay, six and three. Six hits, three leads. The next day it runs. Five hits, three leads. Four you know, fourteen hits, nine leads for a cost of ninety dollars. That's about ten bucks a lead. Is there anyone here that wouldn't pay ten dollars? to generate a high quality lead. Now, the next three ads ran in all three local papers. Okay, these two classified ads ran just in the era banner. That's my local newspaper here in Newmarket. But there were, in the surrounding towns, there were two other newspapers, one in Richmond Hill and one, one in Markham. These three ads ran in all three newspapers. Okay, find out what the home down the street sold for. Two hits, one lead, one hit, one lead, one hit, zero leads. In all three newspapers, for the entire week, because the paper came out three times a week, Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, I only generated two leads at a cost of $209. That's about 100 bucks a lead. That's pretty expensive. But still, if I converted one of those leads to a listing appointment, it's worth it. The divorce campaign, the entire week, 20 hits and eight leads for $209, so about 50 bucks a lead. Online home evaluation, obviously there was no ID number because we're driving traffic to a URL, not a four-digit ID number. But I want everyone to see how this is repeated every week. Okay, week of January the 9th. Now, notice that the bottom three ads ran in all three newspapers. The home down the street campaign and the online home evaluation campaign ran every single week in all three publications. I did rotate the third ad. So January the 2nd, I've got divorce in there. Then I've got um, inspection. But I created a rotation. I knew exactly what to run and where to run them. But I only ran five classified ads a week. How many of you can do that? Now, keep in mind, what I'm showing you enabled me to sell over 500 homes a year. So we're talking about five classified ads, and I created a rotation. Now, I never had to worry about this rotation because my assistant took care of it. You see, my assistant, her name is Peggy. And Peggy would fax the newspaper the five ads that I want to run this week. And then the week of January 9th, here are the five ads that Craig wants to run. This had absolutely nothing to do with me. Once I figured out which ads worked the best, I created a rotation. And then I delegated. And all of you should be doing the same thing. Okay, now I want to give you a, a, a bigger picture from the 1,000-foot level. These are the classified ads I ran. These are the results for an entire year. So home down the street. It ran every week. Ten hits, four messages. Twelve hits, four messages. 
you see this is very typical. Three, four, I got six messages here. Okay, very, very typical results. I mean, that's, that's unusual. I look at 11 hits, one message. Okay, these are the same kind of results that you get. You may get better results than I get. Divorce, home inspection, for sale by owner. These are all the ads that we've been discussing. Okay, so these are on the coaching website. You can look at them. The actual campaigns I ran and the results that I got every time I ran them. Look at not all of them worked. Country homes, take out a rotation for now. Yeah, that one didn't work. <clears throat> Here are the display ads. In Aurora, we have a newspaper called the Auroran. This is the ad that ran. This is the display ad that runs outside of the classified section. Okay, two inches wide by one inch deep. Here's the Bradford Times. These three display ads ran in the era banner. So I had five classified ads that ran every week, and I had three display ads that ran in the era banner. All you have to do is copy these ads. If you copy these ads, you change Remax to your company, you put in your domain name, your your URL, but just copy it. It will work just as well for you. Here's what the online home evaluation uh, lead looks like when it comes to me. Yours should look the same. Okay, so what am I looking for? The address, selling within six months, yes. Information on the home. This is a very good lead. I knew whenever I generated one of these online home evaluation leads where they checked off yes to moving, that was an extremely good lead. Okay, so again, here is a fax from my assistant Peggy to Jan at the newspaper. And these are the display ads for the entire month of January. Okay, so on Sunday, January, this well, here's the instructions at the top. It says, run three display ads in each paper, with two of these being the online home evaluation ad and the other one listed below. So the online home evaluation display ad worked so well, I wanted it to run twice in every paper. So three ads would run. Let me just be clear on this so everybody gets this. Three ads would run. Two of them would be this guy. Okay, two of them would be this. And then I'd rotate, I'd rotate the others. Okay, so I'd rotate either this one or this one. So again, automatic marketing. This had nothing to do with me. Once the rotation was created, my assistant would organize this with the newspaper or post them online, Google pay-per-click. She would take care of it all. And all I would look at is reports. So let's have a look at the reports. Here's a report for the display ads. Can you remember the online home evaluation campaign? York Region Home Pricing, if you remember, that's the ad that I'm running in the era banner. Okay, right here. Find out what your home is worth online. Look at the domain name, yorkregionhomepricing.com. So how well did that work? Well, let's see. In December, I generated 83 leads. 83 leads from that little ad. In November, 134. Remember, these aren't hits. These are actual requests for an online home evaluation. In October, 108. In September, 153. In August, 297. Now, take that same campaign and you run it in a different, a different newspaper, doesn't work nearly as well. 
Can everyone see the importance of testing? I want to make sure everybody gets this. Okay, here's the ad in the Aurora. Here's the ad in the Era Banner. Can you see the ad looks identical, looks exactly the same? Find out what your home is worth online. Visit quickonlineevaluation.com in the Aurora newspaper. In the Era Banner, the domain name is yorkregionhomepricing.com. Let's go down and look at the results. York Region Home Pricing, 83, 134, 108, 153. The exact same ad in a different publication, zero. Zero versus 83, one versus 134. Here's the mistake that some of you are making. You're running your ad here. You're running your ad in the Aurora, and you know what you're thinking? This doesn't work. The same ad over the same time period. There's absolutely no comparison. But if you don't test, you don't know this. What happens if you just ran the ad here? If you just ran the ad in this publication, you know what you're saying to your coach right now? This doesn't work. Craig's system doesn't work in my marketplace. Doesn't, doesn't work. Doesn't work. Because you're not testing. Now, let's have a look at different ads. Not only do you need to test different publications, you need to test different ads. Let's go to Fixer Uppers. Okay, let's go back to the Fixer Upper ad. In the era banner, I ran three ads. We've already discussed that the online home evaluation was a huge jackpot, but guess what? The other ads didn't work as well. Fixer Uppers, visit bankdistresssale.com. Well, let's check out the results. Okay, in the era banner, the online home evaluation ad that was a jackpot, 83 leads in December. Same publication, era banner, but a different ad. We only generate 23. Still a pretty good response, but only 23. Look at uh, look at this one here, bank foreclosures and distress sales, only 17. Can everyone see the point I'm making? I, I want to make sure I'm clear on this. These three ads all ran in the, the same newspaper but greatly different results. What do these ads cost? Exactly the same price. They're exactly the same price. But the message is different. It cost me no more to run the ad here than it did in these publications It didn't work. So that's why tracking and testing is so very, very important. Let's have a look at it here again. Online home evaluation campaign in the era banner, 144 leads. In the Aurora, four. In the Bradford Times, one. Fixer Upper in the era banner, 67. Bank foreclosure and distress sales in the era banner, 31. So there's a tremendous difference, not only within a publication, but between the publications. My message to you is you need to test because if you're not getting good results, it may be because you haven't discovered the right combination for you, the right combination of message and medium. Now, let's have a look at my success website control panel. This is the same control panel that all of you should be going to on a very regular basis. You go to the control panel under track my success these are the leads for the month of January in one month that I was able to generate just with my my website 587 leads okay not visits not hits but actual leads York Region home pricing was number one that was the display ad that offered the online home evaluation. 144 leads for the month of January. Bank distress sale, 67. Unknown are people that, uh, that uh, th these are people that visited my home page of the less branded site. They went directly to the home page and we weren't able to track. My Google campaigns. YRNG News, that's a banner ad that I ran on our local newspaper site, on their website. 
but very simple, very easy, very inexpensive. I generated 587 leads in one month. Let's have a look at the editorials. Now I'm going to make these bigger so you can see them. I, the point I want to make here is how carefully I tracked and the detail that I would go into. So these are the editorial ads. On January 4th, I ran the best financing campaign with this headline, How to Secure Super Low Down Payment Home Loans When You Buy a Home. Now, I tested the headlines. I also tested what page number the ad ran on. This ran on page five, a pretty good positioning. So environment with the bottom left-hand corner of the page, pretty good positioning. I had two hits and one message. On Thursday, January the 6th, I ran the legal campaign, how to avoid three legal mistakes before you list your home for sale. ID 3801, page A8, top left-hand side of the page, good positioning, one hit and one lead. On January 9, save thousands. That was the campaign. The headline was find out how to save thousands of dollars when you buy your next home. The scripture is recorded in 4712. The ad ran on page 7. It was on the middle left, the middle of a left-hand page, good positioning. Had three hits and three messages. But can you see this is very typical? Look at this, three messages, four messages, two messages, seven messages. That's pretty good for me. Six messages. Most of you get a better response than I was getting. How many of you are tracking with this kind of detail? Here's the liberal newspaper. Okay, this is a little bigger newspaper or a, a wider circulation. See the costly home seller mistakes? 14, 14 leads I generated that day. That's unusually good for me. Okay, now the hotline reports. You should all be accessing your hotline reports by going into the AMS control panel. Okay, so ID 1162, I had four callers but they left five messages. So one of the callers left me two messages. Fixer Upper Homes, Acreage, 10 Questions Report, Costly Home Sellers Report. Again, it's all tracked. So on that particular, for that particular period of time, there were 15 scripts played 49 times there were 16 different callers, and I got 14 messages. That's pretty good, right? 16 unique callers left 14 messages. These are really good leads. Okay, now let's have a look at the editorial ads for an entire year. Let me blow this up so you can see it. Hey, Craig. Yeah, go ahead. Just, just to interject, you, you said something obviously really important there at the end. These are really good leads. A lot of times the perception is that the quantity of leads is really important. Uh, it's important for everybody to recognize you are selling 550 homes a year, generating 537 leads a year. So converting one in 12 essentially into a closing. So if I want to sell 30 homes next year and I close one in 12, I only need 30 good leads a month. So we don't need to have hundreds and hundreds of leads. In fact, one of the key points of the quantum leap system that I think a lot of our members skip over is step two of the six-step quantum leap system. Step one is we run direct response lead generators to, to get the initial lead. Step two is having our hotlines and, and websites sift and sort the leads for us so that we only get the best quality leads. A lot of times we forget quantity is not quality. I'd rather have less leads so that I don't have to make as many phone calls, don't have to be entering as many leads into my wise agent database, but have a better quality lead. 
So, you know, for folks who are thinking, well, nobody reads the newspaper anymore and, and these sorts of things have changed, that's, that's not the case at all. The newspaper's still in business. There's people out there. You don't need the quantity. No it's the quality. And, and plus, you can do, you can run these ads all over the place. You're going to track wh what works the best for you, but for many of you, you're not doing the tracking. Or, or you give up far too soon before you discover the right combination between the best ad and the best medium. The point I wanted to make earlier is, what if I had given up after I ran my first ad in the Aurora newspaper or, or in the Bradford Times? I might have given up on this. I might have thought, well, this doesn't work. Or even the Era Banner, which turned out to be my best newspaper, had I run an ad that didn't work, even though the medium was an excellent medium for me, had I ran an ad that didn't work well and I stopped at that, I might have given up. Look at how I, I want to show you the detail, the detail that I go into with my tracking. So here's all the editorial ads I ran for an entire year. Okay, I want you to look at the information that I gather. So let's have a look at the costly home seller campaign. That's the, you know, the ad that says, uh, which of these costly home seller mistakes will you make when you sell your home? Well, that's only, that's only one of the headlines. Okay, so this is the headline that many of you are familiar with, right? But look at all the different headlines that I tested. And look at the variance in the response. Can everybody see that? The only thing that changed was the headline. Okay, big difference in response. How to sell your home faster for top dollar. On March the 7th, I had 18 calls and 17 messages. But which of these costly home seller mistakes when you make when you sell your home was run on February the 1st? I had three hits and two messages. That's a tremendous difference. Now, I want to share with everyone how I use the four digit ID number in the hotline to organize myself. You'll notice that the costly home seller mistakes campaign always started off with ID 30. Okay, the third digit in the four digit ID code told me the headline. So zero, so three zero, when the, last, the third digit was a zero, I knew the headline was seven things you must know weeks before putting your home up for sale. When the third digit was a one, the headline was why three quarters of home sellers don't get the price they want for their home. So the third digit, the, the first two digits told me the campaign. The third digit told me what, what the headline was. The fourth digit told me the medium. It told me which campaign or which, uh, which publication it was running. So even even by the even by the four digit ID number, I could tell you if you just told me the, the four digit ID number, I could tell you which campaign it ran, which campaign it was, which headline ran, and which publication and which day of the week. So if it was in if it ran in the era banner on a Sunday, the fourth digit would be a one. If it ran in the era banner on a Tuesday, it would be a two. If it ran in the era banner on a Thursday, the last digit would be a three. Now, there's not many of you that have your, your businesses organized to really understand what's working the best for you. So I'm hoping that by showing you this, it will help you get organized. See, I always knew what worked the best. And then all I had to do was build a simple rotation that was delegated to somebody else. So these are all of the editorial ads I ran. I did all the testing. You don't have to do that now. All you have to do is copy. 
you don't have to spend tens of thousands of dollars and years and years and years of your life figuring out what ads and what headlines work the best. All that's been done for you. All you have to do is copy and test which ones are going to work the best for you. So I would recommend that you spend some time going through my results and creating reports that mimic this for your own business. Can I throw something into this conversation? Yes, go ahead. This is, this is absolutely awesome, by the way. And for those of you who've never had a peek into what Craig did to create the leads that he did and to become a great real estate marketer, you're probably as amazed as all of us were the first time we saw it. But here's the point Craig is making. He always knew what was going on with his marketing. And the reason he knew was because every week either he or somebody close to him was tracking the results. Now, many of you tell us, well, I ran an ad last Tuesday. I have an ad running on Saturday. Oh, Rick, I, I put an ad up on Wednesday, and I didn't get anything from it. I hope everybody can see that never once ever working with Craig's organization has Craig said or has your coach said that running one ad on one day in one publication is the be-all, end-all. Because here we are. We're taking some lessons from Craig today, and he's showing you that he ran multiple ads, multiple lead generators in multiple media outlets over the course of a week. How many people listening today actually have a week-ending report process? How many of you are disciplined enough to sit down on Monday and look at last week's ad results? That's what I used to do. How many of you are disciplined enough to sit down at the end of the month and do a month-end report for yourself so you know exactly where your business came. Well, guess what? Craig Proctor, one of the most successful real estate agents in the history of organized real estate, did that every single week. If you can copy, you can succeed. How many of you, as Craig said this morning, know what your numbers are? The lesson here is know your numbers. And I'm, I know what James is thinking. When you send ads up to the ad clinic, send the results along as well. Tell us how your ad is performing because that's really good for you and for everybody who's listening. Okay, now, hopefully what I demonstrated was what I did was really, really simple. I wasn't running tons of ads. Let me summarize this so everybody gets it. I ran five classified ads in a week, five of them. It cost me usually less than $10 to generate a lead. I ran two to three display ads in a week. The cost was usually less than $10 per lead. A display ad is just a classified ad that runs outside of the classified section. I had to give it a name, but that's all it really is. I found, I determined that some of the classified ads worked well outside of the classified section. Okay, and they were peppered randomly throughout the local paper under a remnant space deal. So wherever the newspaper had space, that's where my ad would run. Okay, and the, the cost was low enough that that strategy was a winner. And then I ran two to three editorial ads. Okay, the Craigslist ads, again, were posted by one of my assistants. Google pay-per-click was taken care of by my assistant. The ads that worked the best in the newspaper also worked the best everywhere else. If you take a look at the postcards, that I developed, what you'll determine is the messages on the postcards are the same as the messages that worked well everywhere else. So when the online home evaluation campaign worked really well in the classified section, and then I determined it worked really well outside of the classified section, peppered randomly as a display ad, 
Well, guess what? I also found it worked well as a postcard. And it worked well as a Google pay-per-click ad. What you'll find is the messages that work the best tend to work the best in many, many different mediums. But the medium does matter. I demonstrated that today. The era banner for me was a huge jackpot where the other two local papers, the Auroran and the Bradford Times, were a bust. What I fear is that some of you are running either the wrong ads or you're running the right ads but in the wrong publications. And you're struggling because of this. And maybe for some of you, you don't even know what's working and you don't know what's working because you don't have detail, you don't, you have the ability to track, but you're not, you're not tracking, you're not paying attention to the results. Now, I'm going to have James take us through uh, some ads here. And I'm going to encourage you to ask us some questions. Let's, let's make this webinar interactive. So you can type your questions in. If you have an audio question, Andrew will take your audio questions. But you can ask us any question about anything we've covered here today. Because I really want you just to understand how simple what I did was. And the reason I've asked the coaches to come on here is because they know it's true because this is exactly what they did when they were in your shoes. They just copied what I did, and now they're top agents in their respective marketplaces. In fact, now they're coaching other realtors to do what I taught them to do many, many years ago. So, James, let's have a look at ad number one. Yeah, I think what's important to look at with all of these ads is that uh, the rules that sort of uh, bound all of the different types of ads. And maybe the rules for classified ads aren't always the same as for editorial ads, for example, uh, or for direct mail, for USP advertising. I just want to get give everybody an idea of what makes an ad really good. So we're looking at the distress sale ad. And obviously, the content of the ad we've talked about, uh, the fact that we're offering great deals or what are perceived as great deals to create that urgency to respond. A couple of things you'll notice here in this ad is that They've included both a domain name and a, a hotline number as well. In print, that's exactly what you want to do. You want to include both. If, it, if this was online, different story. But here's the thing that strikes me most about this ad. And by the way, this ad was very, very successful. It's that it ran in a real estate publication where there wasn't a ton of other real estate. It wasn't like there were hundreds and hundreds of other properties here. And you may look at this page and think, you know what, I'm probably not going to get anything from this because there's really no real estate here or very little real estate. So I'm going to skip it and I'm going to determine that this is not somewhere where I need to test, which would have been a massive mistake because it turns out that even though there isn't a ton of other real estate ads, this ad worked very well. And I think, Craig, you're, you're a testament to that. There were many, many days when under homes for sale in the era banner, uh, our local newspaper, you may have found two or three other ads, and sometimes perhaps less than that. So this idea that there has to be all kinds of real estate ads there, and that's what draws the attention, it isn't always true, and ultimately it's a test. So that's something that really struck me about this ad and um, the fact that it was very successful. Okay, so here's the opposite. Okay, now check out this classified page you can see how totally different the two of them are. On this page, it's nothing but properties for sale. I mean, this is a page dominated by homes for sale. So a couple of things you want to notice about this one. Number one, it clearly stands out off the page. On a page like this, uh, where all of the ads are seemingly identical, advertising individual properties for sale, boy, does this one stand out with distress sales, plural, more than one, variety choice options, great deals, urgency to respond, all of those elements that make the ad very, very successful. Um, but again, what we're, what we're showing you here is how versatile these ads are, and we can never judge the results before running the ad. So this ad worked very successfully on a classified page with tons of other properties for sale. The other, the previous distress sale ad, 
uh, was very, very effective on a page with very little real estate classified ads. You've got to test it before you know. Uh, here's a, a double wide ad here, no money down. Part of the battle here when you are running uh, your classified ads is they really do need to stand out. Anything you can do to ensure that eyeballs are drawn towards your ad, you'll very likely find that it will increase the response. And we've found this certainly from hundreds if not thousands of students over the years is they can take the identical classified ad and when they do things like double wide, reverse type, add a little color, um, you know, prominence on the page, all of these things, they go towards making the ad more visible and more visible Re results in, in uh, more response. So that's something that you'll notice here with this ad. Again, um, in a in a, a moderately uh, popular real estate classified section here, offering no money down, uh, targeting primarily first-time buyers. All right, good ad. Okay, the next one should be coming up here for you. You know what's so great about these ads is, or, or what's so simple about these ads is, these are examples of students copying. I mean, really, that's what, that's what these ads are. If they look familiar, it's because they're taken right from the ad generation program. Um, you know, they're customized to a degree, and then they're, they're run. And um, that's what makes them successful is, this is not, these are not efforts to reinvent the wheel. Um, here's one. All the other agents are taking out space advertising their individual property listings. And you know what? This, this agent may be as well. However, in addition to that, in addition to generating some response from prospects from their property listings, and in addition to pacifying their sellers, what they're also doing is generating uh, far greater response by running ads that offer variety and choice that are more difficult to disqualify. This one really stands out. If you're looking for a property in Woodbury, Bank foreclosures and distress sales, woodburymustsell.org. A um, couple little things that we would critique in this ad. It's a great message. It really stands out. It has all those elements. Um, but, it, but the call to action in print, there are a couple things that we have found make a difference over and over and over again. And the one is this. Even if it's just tiny, adding the www to the front of the domain name causes your eye to immediately identify it as a domain name. Next, having .org instead of .com, the reason you likely have .org is because the .com isn't available. And the reason the .com isn't available is because one of your competitors has it. Now, the problem is when I go onto my keyboard and I enter woodburymustsell.com, which isn't unlikely that I would do, it's going to take me to a real estate website. So I'm going to think, yeah, I'm I'm on the right place. The problem is you, you're you're paying money driving traffic to your competitor's website. So, in print, you'll find that a .com is superior to .info .org .any of the other uh, uh, alternatives that you have. In online, however, um, you know what they're clicking on the domain name, so it could be uh, you know .dot whatever, and it, it it isn't relevant. Uh, so for print, that's something, and also. Maybe they tested this, um, but adding a, uh, your 1-800 hot number is a great idea. It's a test. If you run it and you find overwhelmingly you get better response when you only offer the domain name, then yes, that would make sense. But first, it's a test. Uh, here's the next ad. Again, bank for uh, bank owned fixer uppers, free list of pictures. And in this one, they've included a uh, uh, a range, a price range. They're really trying to capture those prospects looking between 100 and 200. So they understand that although they are eliminating anybody below 100 or above 200, they're purposely eliminating those, uh, those prospects. What they are doing is they're really calling out and grabbing by the throat all of those prospects they're really looking to attract between 100 and 200. It becomes even more compelling to those prospects because of the price range. Um, uh, here's a, an editorial style ad, um, really good job. I mean, this looks like an article in the newspaper. And that's, that is the rule. Run your editorial so it looks like an article in the newspaper. The column widths, uh, the size of type, the style of headline, um, even little things. Like you'll notice how in the headline you can just read stole truck gets two to four years. Um, that was Craig a few years back in his youth. Uh, but, but you'll notice how none of the letters are capitalized. 
in the headline. That's very typical. Only the first letter of the first word is capitalized. It's a little thing, but you notice it when yours is different. So they've done a great job here, and that's why this not only looks great, um, but it worked extremely effectively. And by the way, here's what's great about these uh, these editorial style ads. You can have four or five of them and rotate, create a rotation or a system of running these ads, just as Craig has been describing with your classified ads. But here's why they work. Every, you know, week in and week out, local uh, area residents are reading the local newspaper. We understand not everybody reads it, certainly. Maybe even a small percentage read it. But here's the difference. Even though the same editorial ads are being run in the regular rotation, perhaps for years and years, as in Craig's case and, and probably many of, uh, of our, our uh, panelists here, but the, the point is this, is that it's amazing how when somebody is considering selling, they're seeing the ad for the very first time. In other words, that article has always been there. Craig's been running it over and over and over again in a regular rotation for many, many years. It's always been there. But now that this is applicable to you, now that you're considering buying or selling, all of a sudden you read this headline and you notice it, you recognize it for the very first time as if it hadn't been there before. And that, of course, is an example of your reticular activator, recognizing something that because it's now applicable to you, you would have dismissed subconsciously now it stands out in the forefront only because it's something that, that applies to you. Um, so do not dismiss these editorial ads, but if you're going to run them, you need to run them uh, uh, effectively like this one. Uh, Craig, here is a, a an example of a property display ad, we would call it. And the, the ingredients for a property display ad, there are three. Uh, three main ingredients, that's called. The first is this, headline. Headline needs to promote a, U, a USP, okay? And the USP is designed to do two things. Number one, grab attention from the seemingly identical property display ads in the magazine or publication. All of them are the same. They feature either no headline at all or they feature a headline with, you know, uh, somebody's face or name or a company logo, that kind of thing. We want ours to be different by promoting a unique selling proposition. And that unique selling proposition also is going to be attached to our likeness, to our business, to ourselves. We want to make sure that the marketplace begin to associate you, uh, in this case Morgan Hill, with this very valuable, unique selling proposition that none of the other agents in the publication are offering. So for this ad, mission accomplished. Okay, the second element or ingredient in these kinds of property display ads is we want to make sure that mixed in with our properties are universal offers. In other words, the individual properties themselves are easy to disqualify, very easy to get rid of them. Too big, too small, wrong area, wrong price, wrong this, wrong that, don't like the look of it, whatever it is, it's easy to put a line or an X through any individual property. But if mixed in with those properties are universal offers that are more difficult to disqualify, what you'll likely find as hundreds and hundreds if not thousands of students over the years have discovered in following this formula is you'll very likely generate far more response from the universal offers in the ad than you will the properties themselves. And then the third feature is this. In the properties themselves, the biggest mistake you'll make is trying to sell the property by giving all the features of the property. What you're doing, the more features you give of the property, the more you're disqualifying prospects. Uh, and you also want to make it easy to get the information about that property, which means essentially using a 1-800 hotline and including that call to action in virtually every single one of the, um, of the property ads uh, that, you're, that you're displaying here on this page. Sunday tour. Um, this, is, uh, this is a Sunday tour ad. The biggest rule with the Sunday tour ad is to copy by far. Craig mastered the Sunday tour ad. After doing it a hundred different ways, he arrived at the best way to promote the Sunday tour of homes. As far as the ad goes, what it does is it clearly uh, gives the time that the tour is stopping by that property. But the explanation of how the tour works is critical. So you'll notice to the right-hand side, the explanation of the tour. You choose the properties that you want to visit. The biggest mistake is if you just feature the properties and you talk about a tour, 
people think that you're asking them to get on a bus and nobody wants to get on a bus. Well, some people want to get on a bus. Most people don't want to get on a bus. Um, so that's very important that it very clearly explain how the tour works. Now, here's a mistake that you'll make. You will want to extend the time of the tour because you'll look at this and say, 10, 15 minutes, no, nah, Craig's crazy. In my marketplace, that's too short. It needs to be at least half an hour. And you'll stretch it to half an hour or 45 minutes for each property. You're missing the reason that you're doing it this way is to ensure that anybody who's going to show up shows up at the same time. That's what creates the auction-like atmosphere. And how about this? If no one's going to show up, let's have no one show up in 10 minutes, then no one show up in 45 minutes. So doing it this way is absolutely critical. Um, it, nothing was done by accident. Final thing I'll say about the Sunday tour to make these yeah. ads work really well, uh, the final thing I'll say about them is this. Where do you run them? Where do I run this tour at? Can I run it just anywhere? No, you can't. You must run it where open houses are being advertised. That's where it will do the best. So there is somewhere in everybody's marketplace where prospects go to find the open houses coming up on the weekend. Wherever that is, if you take this ad and you run it there, you'll you'll generally generate far more traffic to your tour than if you take it and you run it somewhere where nobody's looking for open houses, in addition to the signage and all of those other things that you can do outside of the ad as well. Uh, but those those are general rules of thumb for all of these different ads. And if you follow them, you'll find that arriving at the formula you're looking for will happen much more quickly than if instead you reinvent the wheel with each one of them and uh, you know try to change and tweak and improve and all that stuff that um, you know Warren and the the rest were uh, were cautioning you about earlier on in the call. So, uh, Craig, hope that was thorough enough. Yeah, very good. Uh, let's do this. Uh, let's go back to Andrea and let's see if we have some questions or comments. Yes, sir. We have a few who've already pressed the hand icon, but if you have an audio mic on your computer or if you're on the phone, you can press the hand icon with your mouse and get in our queue. I've got a few chat questions. I've been answering those, Andrea, as we've been uh, uh, talking here. Uh, but let's do some audio questions right now. We have Kui Wu. Your mic is now open. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, how are you doing today? Hi, Craig. Uh, I just got a few questions about because uh, I saw your, you you demo that demonstrate as the almost a uh, resale homes because I I want to do like uh, uh, pre construction pre sales like the condo pre sales. So do you have any like tips suggestion how can I like do the advertisement? Okay. Have you talked to your coach about this? Yes, and uh, I didn't quite get it actually. So I, I hope I okay, can well, give look, a bit more. Here's what you need to know. It doesn't matter what type of buyer or seller uh, you, you want to target. We need mm -hmm. to understand what is it that they want, and then we need to craft an ad based on the system mm -hmm. to get those types of prospects to raise their hand. So tell me, who is your, your ideal prospect? I think it's like the investors. Invest investors, okay. Yes. So you could run an ad that said investors. Uh, uh, fixer uppers. Uh, is it just condos, or would you sell any uh, type of property? I think uh, many folks on the pre construction condos. Okay. So, um, uh, what if your ad said "attention investors"? Uh, free list of pre construction uh, condominiums, including distress sales and bank foreclosures. Mm -hmm. uh, free uh, condo list. Visit and then whatever your domain name is. Okay. Okay, because my coach told me I can check my MLS for this sold history to check my market. And for the pre-construction, I don't know where to get those. Like, okay, well, hang on. The first thing you want to do is yeah. before you just wave a magic wand and decide, okay, this is going to be my target market, your coach is absolutely right. Yes. You want to do some research to make sure uh, that that is a productive target market. So yeah. how did you come up with that? How did you decide that you were going to target uh, pre-construction condominiums? Because uh, that's why it may be easier to do it. And that's well, most I mean, I'll tell you what, if it's, easy, if it's easier to do it, you're the first guy I've had in my coaching program uh, uh -huh. who selected that, that target market. Now, maybe that means you're smarter than everyone else, or maybe no. it means you're, you're fixed on an opportunity that perhaps isn't such a great opportunity. Uh, but, uh -huh. uh, look, uh, we don't have time to, to go into any more detail on this, okay. but uh, I'm going to recommend 
that you do some research mm-hmm. in the MLS district you're interested. Find out how many condos are selling. Mm-hmm. Okay, find out what the demand is. Okay, then we need to find out who's buying those properties. Okay. okay do, you want, do you want to know how to find out who's buying the properties? You call the agent that had the properties listed. Oh, okay. Okay, so if you called um, 20 condo sales and you spoke to the realtors that had them listed and you said, oh, um, I'm doing a bit of research here. By the way, I was wondering, um, where did your buyer come from? Now, if, they all, if, if 9 out of 10 come back and say, well, they're all investors, then you, you might be on to something. Uh, are you here in the Toronto area? Yes. Okay. Uh, I read something recently from CMHC, and uh, they don't think as many investors are buying condos today as, say, a year or two ago. Okay. That most of the condos are actually being, I don't know if you read that article, it was in uh, REM Magazine, but most of the condos that are being sold in Toronto right now are to um, you know, primary owners, not to investors. Mm-hmm. And, they're, and they're closely watching this, of course, because if um, as soon as you get a lot of investors buying condos, they're, they're very concerned about a bubble in the condo market. Mm-hmm. And uh, this article was talking about how the government was actually relieved to see that uh, the majority of, of buyers of condominiums in Toronto were no longer investors, but just, you know, people that wanted to buy a condo. Okay, I see. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, uh, I hope that helps. Uh, let's go back yeah. to Andrea, and we'll take our next caller. Yes, sir. Our next guest is John Cohen. Your mic is now open. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, Craig, I was wondering, what, uh, how would you describe the quality of the leads on Craigslist compared to, let's say, uh, Google Ad, AdWords or Facebook? I would say I like Facebook the best, and then Google, and then Craigslist are probably the lowest quality. But, you know, it's free, right? right. So, you know, uh, that would be like you inviting me over to dinner, and then I complain about dinner, right? Like anything, you, anything you get from Craigslist is a bonus because it doesn't cost you anything. Um, so, you know, many of you who, are, who come to me, you're, you're tight on money. So we say, you know, start with Craigslist. It doesn't cost anything. And the nice thing about Google pay-per-click and Facebook pay-per-click is you can set a very modest budget. Now, what I really like about Facebook is you can specifically target who sees your ad. So, um, you know, I can, I can set it. I don't want people that are, you know, teenagers seeing my ad on Facebook. Right, I can pick the geographical area. So, um, I, you know what, though? It, it's worth testing all three. That's how we find out. Because, really, you don't really care what works the best for me or even what my opinion is. What I recommend that all you do is test the different ads in all the different places available to you, all the different media. And the beauty of this system is you can track everything. So you're going to know, if you pay attention in a couple weeks, not only which ads work the best for you, but where the best places to run them are. Okay, which which? Uh, how many times a day would you ha- would you say you'd have to place the ads on Craigslist? And are there any particular days of the week that you would you know you would probably get the best results? Yeah, you're like thinking weekend? the right way. You're thinking the right way. Um, I first of all, I had a um, a teenager posting these for me. Okay, I had my niece posting these. Uh, you know, paid her a little, give her a little bit of extra money, but she posted them, and she po- post them several times a day. But you will find that certain days and certain times of the week will be more productive. Once mm-hmm. you find that out, uh, then that's when you want to, you or better yet, someone else that you're going to pay less than what you're worth per hour can be posting these. Mm-hmm. What, I, what I like about uh, having my niece do this, I mean, she's online all day anyway. So, right. Right. you know, it's like that's, that's what she does. So uh, she was happy to do this for me. Well, the thing I like about Google and Facebook, you can just put it on automatic and not worry about it and just, you know, devote your time doing other things. Craigslist yeah, is, but, you, you know, you can do this with Craigslist, too. I mean, even like it, it did happen automatic, right? I had my niece do a run, you know, um, test the ads. Every day, she put mm-hmm. them on there. We figured out which ones work the best, and then it is automatic because it's got nothing to do with me. Anything that doesn't have anything to do with you is automatic. Right. So I don't suggest you're the one uh, posting these on Facebook. Like you might, you might want to do it initially because you heard me at the super conference. The theme was this: I innovate, right? I come up with an idea, and then I perfect it, and then I delegate, like the Sunday right. tour of homes, right? 
I figured that out myself. I got it perfected, and then I delegated it and never did it again. So it did rely on people, but just not me. I got you. Okay, so that's what we want to think in terms of is, first of all, you know, you probably want to, you know, get in the mud and get dirty with this, right? And, and you're playing around with it all until you get it figured out, and, and then you perfect it. But once it's perfected, what's the rainmaker theory say? If you can't change the outcome, you don't do it. I don't think you're the only one in the world that can post these ads on Facebook. A rainmaker activity is figuring out initially which ads work the best and which times of the day and how often they run. Yes, I agree. That is a rainmaker activity. But in a couple of weeks, if you pay attention to the results, you've got that figured out, right? Mm-hmm. Now, you just delegate that to your son, your daughter, your niece, your nephew, and mm-hmm. it's a system. Gotcha. Okay. That was a good answer. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Let's see who's next. Uh, we did have a few um, new chat questions, uh, the quite lengthy. Craig, did you want to address some of those? We have um, Facebook is really popular, so we have Ali asking, what is the best type of advertising on Facebook, and are there is there anything on the coaching site where you can reference for Facebook ads? Yes, we have several webinars that you can watch, and we'll show you how to set up your Facebook lead generation. Most of your questions will be answered by watching those videos. And I'm going to recommend that all of you do spend some time on the coaching website. Like I'm noticing here today, and I don't want to discourage you guys from asking questions, but I am noticing that most of the questions being asked here are actually handled on the coaching website. So in other words, if you were to spend some time on the coaching website, most of the questions that you folks have today um, are answered by you just actually spending a bit of time there. Now, as far as what ad works the best, most of our coaches are having success with the online home evaluation ad. And you'll see examples of that when you watch these webinars. Okay, and I have a question from Bakir, and I read it a couple times. Um, I'm going to try to read it to you to see if you can understand what he's saying. He says, I want to work on my buyer's presentation and sign buyer contracts with them. He says, what is the best way to do it? goes on to say, I was working with a buyer for four weeks. I showed all the properties at their budget. When I came back and called them last Monday, I found out they made an offer to a condo. Um, he says he needs help, and it was referred to him by his financing guy. Okay, well, look, before you take a buyer out and you show them properties, you need to use the universal callback script to qualify the buyer, make sure they're a good buyer, uh, that they're qualified, that they're motivated. We don't want to just book an appointment with a buyer because we can. You know, some of the, some of you are so good, you can book appointments with buyers and sellers that you shouldn't even book appointments with. But then you're sitting at the kitchen table wasting your time. So you use the universal callback script. You ask the probing questions. And you determine whether it's a good buyer or seller opportunity. And then you articulate the buyer offer or the seller offer in the script to compel the buyer to meet with you. You must get the buyer to meet with you so you can present the benefits in the buyer presentation. In this case, Bakir, obviously they were a very good buyer because they bought. Uh, If you take them out and you show them properties and then you try to get together with them, well, uh, you're you're gonna have uh, no luck in doing that. Okay, because you've already demonstrated to the buyer that your time is worth nothing you've demonstrated to them that they can call you whenever they want, and you'll run around and show them properties. You would never do that with the seller side of your business. The seller said, uh, hey, Vicure, I want you to advertise my home in the paper. I want you to open house it. I want you to show my property whenever, uh, but I don't want to sign a listing agreement with you. You wouldn't do that. So why should the buyer side of your business be any different? Okay. Lauren is asking about um, domain names, and she's asking, she says there's a dot .properties and a dot .homes instead of a dot .com. Um, earlier, James had mentioned that using a dot .com is best. What are your thoughts on the new dot .properties and dot .homes ending? Okay, look, um, if it's an online ad, and I'm just going to click on it, okay, so it's like Facebook or uh 
you know, it's online, it's a banner ad, it doesn't really matter what the domain name is because no one's actually typing it in, right? They're just clicking on the link. However, if it's in print, I would go with the don, the dot .com because people are used to dot .com. I'll give you a quick example. Uh, one of our long-term, long-time members uh, is a guy by the name of Gil Zabo. He's in Penticton, British Columbia. He runs, he, he's in coaching, he runs my online home evaluation campaign, and his domain name is www.onlinehomeevaluation.ca, okay, Canadian prefix. I run the same ad, but my domain name is onlinehomeevaluation.com, okay, so mine is .com, his is .ca, guess what happens? When he runs the ads, I start getting his leads. So even, the, even though the ad said clearly onlinehomeevaluation.ca, buyers were typing in .com. Now, it was fortunate for Gil that I was getting those leads, and I know him, so I could forward the leads back to him. But if, um, if you have a dot .homes or something else, and uh, your competitor has the same domain .com, if it's your competitor, they might not forward the leads to you. So that's my argument for having a .com. People are just used to it. Even though it could say .homes, you know how the mind works. They could still um, type in .com by habit. Okay. Darwin asks, he was quoted over $1,000 for one ad in a paper, and he's thinking that's a little bit too much to test and measure the results. Is this a price you would suggest, or should he try it with other mediums? Yeah, it's pretty steep. Uh, I would try to negotiate that. Um, I don't know what he's paying a thousand bucks for. Uh, Darwin, maybe you can type that in. Is that like a full-page ad? Is it an editorial ad? And, um, he's saying um, it's an. Oh, he goes on. He just types. It's a, an editorial ad for one day um, in your local free newspaper. It's a lot for a free newspaper. Uh, okay. Would you? What, would, what publication? Where's Where's he running that ad? Let's see what else he typed. Would you recommend placing an ad or use the money for something less? Brampton Guardian. Brampton. Okay, um, that's uh, that's a lot of money. Uh, I would go back, Darwin, and try to negotiate with them. Um, what if you committed to running the ad several times? Would they drop the price? You know, what if you said, well, what if I run it three times? What if I run it five times? Could you drop the price to 500 bucks an insert? Now, keep in mind, even at $1,000 to run your editorial ad, if you, okay, he says $725 for 26 times. Okay, so here's what you do, Darwin. You run the ad, okay, if you sell even one transaction, you do one deal from it, uh, I don't know what your average commission is, let's say it's 10 grand, would you keep running that ad? Would you do that? Would you spend $1,000 to make $10,000? You probably would, right? Now, once you determine that it works, then you can commit for the 26 times that you're talking about here and drop the price from 1000 to 725 And uh, Darwin, work with the publication. Work them over. It's not like they have as many advertisers as they used to. You can probably negotiate a much lower fee. I mean, that's just what they're quoting you without any negotiation, right? Okay, Mike and Cindy George are saying, what about flyers inserted in the newspaper? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, I like that, Mike um, and Cindy. They've asked the question, and they even have come up with their own answer, which is test, right? Yep, so what you want to, uh, what you want to determine there is the, the real head-to-head -head test, Mike and Cindy, that you're doing is you're, you've got the same postcard, the same flyer, and you're testing distribution. So the test is going to be as an insert in the local paper that has free home delivery versus every door direct. Okay, in Canada, we have postal walks here in Canada. Uh, but with every door direct in the U.S., I think it's about 15 or 16 cents. So that's what you want to test. And what you want to test, by the way, is return on investment. Okay, don't get fixated, Mike and Cindy, on what it costs. So, for example... Let's say that it costs you less money to insert your postcards as an insert in the local paper than it did uh, sending up the same number of postcards through the post office. But if you get a much better response with 
the postcards that went out through the post office, and let's say you made $50,000 in commissions versus $30,000 of commissions when that same postcard is sent out as an insert, who cares if uh, the post office costs you 500 bucks more? Because you made an extra $20,000. So this isn't about what costs the lease. It's about ROI, return on investment. Now, by all means, if your return was exactly the same and it costs less to distribute those postcards as an insert through the local paper, then you would know what to do. Okay, um, we'll wrap it up. Um, so, Andrea, I want to thank you for doing a great job here. I want to thank all of our coaches for being with us today. And most of all, I want to thank all of our coaching members. I hope you've enjoyed our uh, coaching session here today and uh, look forward to uh, speaking to all of you on the Thursday role play call. We have an opportunity to role play with myself and James McDonald and We'll help you handle any of the objections you're getting. So everybody have a great day. Go solve some houses. Take care. That concludes today's coaching session.